Hello everybody, welcome to worship today as we gather around the Word of God here at Trinity Lutheran Church and School in Litchfield Park, Arizona. We're glad you're with us as we continue our study of the Gospel of John today. We're going to be taking a look at one of Jesus' favorite ways of teaching sanctification. This is our holy life in Christ. This is our response to salvation, that God has rescued us from our sins, brought us into his kingdom, given us eternal life. And now we have a life to live in his kingdom. Our daily life in Christ is our sanctification. And Jesus' favorite way of talking about it in the Gospel of John is by using the word abide. Abide in me as I abide in you, Jesus says. So we're going to take a look at that word abide, what it means, and, and how it applies to our lives. We're glad you're with us today. We'll see you in just a minute in worship. Condense my life, this walk of faith. Express it in one story and proclaim it to the world. My intent would be that everyone could see on my own I was lost. But with you, my hope is found. All I've held in my possession came from you. Every dream I've realized inspired by you. Any wisdom gain, each triumph play. Every rescue, every miracle explained by you. From the depths of my soul, this is my life's goal. To live each day as someone who has faith. darkest hour I know you'll never leave me that's my greatest source of power and should my days run short and death be close at hand let these words testify to the truth on which I stand came from you every dream I've realized inspired by you any wisdom gain each triumph claim every rescue every miracle explain by you from the depths of my soul this is my life's goal to live each day as someone who has faith in you all I've held in my possession came from you every dream I've realized inspired by you of my 
my soul This is my life's goal To live each day as someone who has faith Let me live each day as someone who has faith I've got to live each day as someone Hi everyone, welcome to worship today. We gather and we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and to call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first scripture lesson, actually our first Three scripture lessons for today are from the book of Proverbs, three different uh, readings from Proverbs today. We begin with the first seven verses of chapter one. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, the king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to understand words of insight, to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the youth. Let the wise hear and increase in learning, and let the one who understands obtain guidance. To understand a proverb and a saying, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. And then we go to chapter 6 of the book of Proverbs, the 20, 20th through the 23rd verse. My son, keep your father's commandment and forsake not your mother's teaching. Bind them on your heart always. Tie them around your neck. When you walk, they will lead you. When you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk with you. For the commandment is a lamp, and the teaching a light, and the reproofs of discipline are the way of life. And our third reading from the book of Proverbs comes from chapter 7, the first four verses. My son, keep my words and treasure up my commandments within you, Keep my commandments and live. Keep my teaching as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. 
write them on the tablet of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister, and call insight your intimate friend. Our gospel lesson for today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 8, beginning at the 31st verse. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say, you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. We continue now by confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus, refuge of the weary, blessed Redeemer whom we love. Fountain in life's desert dreary, Savior from the world above. Oh, how
One of the things that you see in the Gospel of John is that Jesus turns up the pressure about being his disciple. To follow Jesus, to be a Christian, to live a holy life, to be a disciple is serious business. Jesus makes it clear that being his disciple is not one in name only. It is, his church is not some sort of club that you're a member of, nor when you're a disciple who follows and trusts in Jesus, can you neglect his word. In other words, Jesus is clear. The Christian faith and life is not a hobby. In various ways, Jesus teaches us the seriousness of following him, the importance of your Christian faith and life. In the synoptic gospels, remember that's Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they see together synoptic. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, those synoptic gospels, Jesus teaches us that, that we must count the cost as we follow him and live a holy life. He also says that we must pick up our cross and follow him. In those synoptic gospels, Jesus even warns us that, that not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God. In various ways, Jesus teaches us the seriousness of following him. In effect, Jesus is really just teaching us the first commandment, that we are to fear, love, and trust in him above all things. When you get to the Gospel of John, Jesus teaches us the same thing, the seriousness of following him, of being a, a believer and a disciple of Christ. But in the Gospel of John, one of Jesus' favorite ways to teach this is by using the word abide. We are to abide in Christ and his holy word. Here's an example from John chapter 8, one of our gospel, uh, readings, our gospel reading for today. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Jesus uses the word abide to describe our relationship with him and his word. That word abide means to remain to stay put. The word picture is that you live and dwell there, that you make your home in God's holy word. 
it includes the idea of, of continuing to do this and enduring throughout all things your abiding, your staying put throughout your life. When you abide in Christ and his word, then you, you live and move and have your being in Christ and his word. Jesus uses the word abide to teach us our relationship with him in our everyday Christian faith and life. He t uses the word abide to teach us the seriousness of following him. One of the implications of this is that you cannot be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ and neglect his word. You can't be a disciple of Christ and neglect his word. Disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ honor his word and learn it. They are biblically literate and they are doctrinally sound. They are baptized. They are learning and obeying the word of God. In the Gospel of Matthew, that's how Jesus defines discipleship. The baptized who are learning and obeying the word of God. Don't be a stranger to God's holy word. Don't be intimidated by it. Certainly don't neglect it. God the Father has given you his word for you to study throughout your life. God the Son, Jesus Christ, continues to teach you through the Holy Scriptures. And God the Holy Spirit creates and strengthens your faith through the words of your Bible. To abide in Christ and his word means that you live and move and have your being in Christ and his word throughout your life. Later in the Gospel of John, Jesus returns to this term abide and the idea of abiding in him and his word. In John chapter 15, Jesus says this, Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do Nothing. Jesus is teaching us that, that our very life depends on Christ and his word. When you make your home in Christ and learn his word, you become fruitful in the kingdom of God. And Jesus shows us the seriousness of this when he says, without me, you can do nothing. To abide in Christ means that you live and move and have your being in him and his word throughout your life. In another place in the Gospel of John, Jesus teaches us that when we abide in him and study his word, we should focus on him and his work of salvation. That abiding in Christ and his word always draws our attention to his death, burial, and resurrection for us. Here's how Jesus talks about it in John chapter five. Search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, but it is they that bear witness about me. Jesus is teaching us that holy scriptures are Christ-centered. 
that both the Old Testament and the New Testament draw our attention to the cross of Jesus, to the Son of God who gave his life for us. Everything is meant to, to draw our attention and our focus to Jesus' perfect life and his sacrificial death on a cross, the work of salvation that the Son of God and the Savior of the world has done for us. In his resurrection from the dead, God the Father confirms that Jesus really is the Christ. He is the Son of God, and he is the Savior of the world. Jesus says that scriptures testify about him, that they draw our attention and our focus to him, even the Old Testament, and especially the New Testament. One of the things that Jesus is teaching us is that we do not study Holy Scriptures primarily to learn life lessons. That the Bible is not a self-help study guide. Jesus is teaching us that the Word of God does, does not guide us into community action or political involvement or social justice. Rather, we study Holy Scripture to learn about Christ and his love for us and his work of salvation that put him on a cross in our place where he dies, he's buried, and on the third day he rose from the dead. The Holy Scriptures draw our attention and our focus from Genesis to Revelation on the Lord Jesus, who he is and what he has done for us. Later in the New Testament, St. Paul will echo Jesus' words, and in 1 Corinthians 15, he writes this, What I delivered to you as of first importance is what I also received. That Christ died for our sins in accordance with scriptures. That he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. The death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. First importance, St. Paul says. We echo that as conservative Lutheran Christians as this is the first and chief doctrine of the Christian faith. What it means is that everything in the Christian faith is focused on Christ and his word and his work of salvation for us. His, his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection, it's the center of everything. Jesus teaches us that the Holy Scriptures, Old Testament and New Testament, bear witness about him. Jesus teaches us that if we're going to be his disciples, it's serious business. We are to abide in him and his word. In John chapter 5, that verse we just looked at, Jesus even gave us a command that we are to search the Scriptures because they bear witness about me. That word search is a command. It's a present active imperative. It's a command to mean, that means that we are to search and keep on searching the Holy Scriptures to learn more about Christ and his love for us and his work of salvation. You see, that's what God's people do. That's what abiding in Christ and his word is all about. Disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ love the Word of God. We abide in the Word of God. We study it. We learn it. We even memorize it. We grow in our understanding. We mature in our faith. To use Jesus' words, we search the Scriptures to find Christ and His love for us. To learn more about the Savior who gave his life on a cross for us. Searching the scriptures 
is another way that Jesus used to teach us to abide in him and his word. In the Gospel of John, God's will for you is that you live and move and have your being in Christ and his word throughout your life. But boy, don't we fail in doing this? Maybe for you, you haven't searched the scriptures in a long time. Maybe Bible reading and Bible study is non-existent in your life. Maybe you have neglected God's word for a long, long time. If so, then let God renew you. The very thing that you've been neglecting is the only thing that can help you. The gospel good news of the Lord Jesus Christ and his forgiveness and his love and his gift of eternal life creates a burning desire within you. It forgives you your sins. You have peace with God. It creates a desire to respond to that, to that love and mercy and compassion that God has shown you. It creates a hunger and a thirst to abide in Christ and to abide in his word. You now belong to Christ. And he gives his people a passion and a desire to learn more and more about him. It's one of the gifts of salvation. It's only through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's only in his strength, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you can abide in him and that you can search the scriptures. Abiding in Christ and his word Searching the scriptures. That's Jesus' way of, of, of encouraging us to be more and more biblically literate and doctrinally sound. This shows us the seriousness of living as a believer in Christ, as a disciple who follows Christ, who's baptized, and who is learning his word. When you're biblically literate and doctrinally sound, then you're growing in your knowledge and you are maturing in your faith. When you are biblically literate and doctrinally sound, then you can recognize false doctrines and corrupt teachings. You can defend yourself from the temptations of the devil and all of his depraved demons. When you are biblically literate and doctrinally sound, you have Christ and his word as the solid rock of your life that you stand on as you face the difficulties in life. Christ's word and his promises empower you to patiently endure whatever it is that you must go through Whatever the hardship or the pain or the suffering is, Christ is there and his promises will strengthen you. When you are biblically literate and doctrinally sound, you will have a Christian, Christ-centered worldview. You will understand the times and you will not be deceived or fearful or seduced by whatever happens in the world and all of its wicked ways. Abide in Christ. Abide in his word. Search the scriptures. This is all in the realm of sanctification. This is our holy life in Christ. These are the things that we do after we are rescued from our sin. After we are declared righteous and holy and forgiven through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our holy life is a response 
by, by the, generated by the Holy Spirit to what God has done for us in saving us from our sins. First, God saves us. Then we live a holy life. That order is important. In the Gospel of John, Jesus turns up the heat on our sanctification. We, to our, we are to abide in him. We are to abide in his word. As a believer in Christ, you are to learn and study and read and maybe even memorize God's holy word. Make your home in the word of God. Live and move and have your being in holy scriptures. Abide in Christ. Abide in his word. And show yourself to be his disciple. Amen. We pray. Lord Jesus, send us the Holy Spirit so that we may abide in you and your word. Create a hunger and a thirst within us to learn more and more about you. Give us a passion to be biblically literate and doctrinally sound disciples. Teach us to search the scriptures and to understand that your word focuses on you and your love for us. Lord, abide in us as we abide in you. Amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you, May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. God's blessings will see you next week. My only hope is Jesus. Jesus. Through his blood he shed for me Though the earth pass away This truth will remain My home is heaven My healing is the cross And my hope, my only hope Is Jesus I will savor the hope in the grace he gives to me. I will seek the hope for all eternity. I will show the hope to those who have not seen so others can declare triumphantly my only hope. My hope, my only hope is Jesus. And I will share the hope with the lonely and the lost and support the hope no matter what the cost. I will shout the hope, Hosanna to his name. With the choir of heavenly hosts proclaim My only hope is Jesus Through his blood he shed for me Though the earth pass away This truth will remain My home is heaven My healing is 
My hope, my only hope is Jesus. My home is heaven. My healing is the cross. And my hope, my only hope is Jesus. 